We are joined right now by WWE diva Melina, and she is going to be chatting with us about WWE SummerSlam, which is coming up Sunday, August the 14th, from her hometown, no less, of Los Angeles, California. And Melina, SummerSlam and LA now have kind of become uh, this marriage over the last couple of years and kind of establishing uh, LA now as the home of SummerSlam. I know, that's pretty awesome. Like, I'm, I love seeing it because it's like each year it's, it's such a great event, kind of like it seems like WrestleMania now, where it's like a week-long event with people coming in from all around the world, and we we have um, we'll have like stuff like video game things and interviews and parties and all this stuff, and it, it's just a great experience, and it makes it a lot easier being in LA, so I don't have to leave my house. <laughs> I, I've got to imagine that's a, that's a huge perk, just being that that you're there. Oh, it makes a that, huge difference. You know, being to sleep in your own bed every night for mm -hmm. like an entire week, I, I would assume. So I mean, that's got to be. I think that's something that a lot of fans they don't realize. You guys being on the road so much. I mean, four different cities every week, and then yeah. all the travel on top of it. I mean, that's got to be just nice to be. Hey, we're based for a couple days at home. Oh my goodness. Like my mom always tells me, she's like, I don't know how you do it because I'll have her like, I'll have her go like just from going from where she is to where I'm at, she'll pack for the day. And she says that's stressful enough as it is. So to pack for a week, every single week, she's like, I don't know how you do it. Well, I don't know how I do it, mom. I'm a horrible packer, horrible. <laughs> Now, one of the things I wanted to talk about you is uh, the WWE has been making a, a huge initiative online uh, with, with a lot of social media, Twitter. I know you are on Twitter, and you have become now one of the, the featured participants in Zack Ryder's uh, <laughs> online videos. How did this kind of uh, germinate, so to speak, where, where you kind of have like a weekly role now in these videos? I don't know how it came about. All I know is like for the longest time, Zack Ryder's dad was obsessed well he still is obsessed with John but I think his obsession with John kind of carried over where he like roped me into it because to be more like John Morrison I gotta be completely like him I wear his clothes and now I'm gonna pretend I have his girl too yes. so he has that cardboard cut out of me goes and wants the dog with it. <laughs> I was like, what's going to happen next? I'm so scared to see what's going to happen next. <laughs> what, are, what are some of your thoughts on kind of the way Zach has gone about this? I mean, he's been very public that, listen, I just started this video because I wanted to be featured on television more. And now it's grown into this huge phenomenon online. I mean, uh, as a talent, I mean, is this something you guys uh, look at as something, you know, we have to make more of a presence online. And, and Zach has now created this amazing following. <laughs> I think it's like really incredible and great. It, it probably like, it's getting more people to go online and see what's going on. So I think Zach's doing phenomenal. He's doing something wonderful. Um, it's helping. I think it is helping him. From it carries over to the TV, like to Raw. Mm -hmm. But just to me, just that video by itself, what he's doing alone without even bringing it back to Raw. I think it's so entertaining, so entertaining. Now, I've seen uh, uh, you, you've been on Twitter, and we've seen you kind of going back and forth with like Gail Kim. I mean, is this something that uh, the company kind of encourages you guys to go out and be proactive on Twitter? Is this no. just simply you guys on your own? <laughs> Tell us about what, what you have found, the benefits, whether positive, negative, uh, when it comes to Twitter. I, to me, it's, it's nothing that um, the WWE said, hey, I need you to talk to Gail. Like these girls, they're all my friends and everything, and we're just goofing around. Like, I'll, well, something that relates to it could like, so half the time it relates to wrestling, what we like the storyline, and the other half is just us goofing around with each other. So it's just us picking on each other because we love each other. <laughs> <laughs> Some people take it to heart. They're like, you shouldn't say that to to Gail and blah blah blah, and they take it so seriously, and I'm like, she's my friend. I could tell, like, I could say this stuff to her, and it's okay. But it, I do believe that because we have such an active role, like um, the way we are perceived, like we are role models. So whatever we do say, it has an impact. So I make sure to tell people, hey, this is, we're just playing. I either let them know that this is my friend or this is a character. So that people can know, like, when I goof around, they shouldn't be, like, it's, it's not okay to be, like, because there's a lot of online bullying. Sure. So you got to make sure to let people know, like, don't bully other people. Just treat others the way you want them to be treated. 
it's really interesting with, with WWE because within you compare it's unlike any other television program where oh, you know like it's it. simply <laughs> that you know you are playing a character on television there are credits with it whereas in WWE you're playing this character and then uh, a lot of characters now are taking that to Twitter where I think a lot of people just view you as what they see on television oh, and there yeah. isn't that separation that you get with you know a show like a you know Two and a half men, for instance, something like that. Yeah, it's totally true. It's it's difficult and it's crazy and fun, like hits everything all wrapped up into one. But yeah, like I I don't think that people kind of not a lot of people, just some people, just a handful of people, like they don't they can't differentiate that this is a character, that there's a character and then there's a human being. But we just got to make it known, and I think we we have in the last couple of years. I like just tell people this is entertainment. Mm -hmm. There's an E in WWE. Yeah, and I think it's, it's uh, <laughs> kind of emphasizing uh, that point. Uh, earlier this year, back in January, we saw a change in your character on television. Uh, you've kind of played both sides. D do you have a preference of kind of uh, how your character is portrayed? Does it matter to you? Well, I love both. This is a crazy thing. I love both because I feel like as a good guy, I get to like showcase everything that I can do. I, I, I really do love it because people see me for who I am and that they're allowed to voice their appreciation for what I'm able to do. But then as a heel, I, you know, they have to hate me. But then at the same time, it's funner. <laughs> it's so much funner because then I get to goof around and I get to be my alter ego. And for some people, like they say, like, their character is themselves magnified. Well, the heel, the bad ca guy character is, to me, it's the opportunity to be everything that I, not that I wish I could be, but there's those moments where, you know, somebody treats you bad or someone says the most rudest thing or cuts you off or whatever the scenario is. And usually I just like, oh, I just let it go because I move on with my day because it's not worth getting angry or saying something rude. But the, being the bad guy is my opportunity to think, man, if that one day I wish I would have said this, now I could do it in my character. <laughs> now, I, now, back when, when the turn occurred, I mean, they, they kind of were presenting this uh, issue with, with Natalia, Natalia, and then it didn't seem to, to go much forward, and there was a lot of speculation that there were some comments on Twitter that led to, to <laughs> Melina being off television. Can you re respond to that? That is just so funny. Like, um, Everyone always says, it's because Melina has heat, or Melina did this, or no, that's not the case. Like the, they wanted a different direction for um, other girls, and then they wanted to give the, shift the opportunity. The storylines were leading somewhere else, and so Natalia and I, because if you think about it, if it was just punishment for me, why was Natalia roped into it? It's, the thing is, is that the storylines had to go some, we're headed in a different direction, so we had to be pushed back. And that's the way it goes sometimes. It, it happens to everybody, it's just not, not just me. So it wasn't anything specific, and it wasn't because of Twitter, because I've been on Twitter for, for a while now, so it wasn't because of that. And it's just, that's the way it, it went. And before we wrap up, uh, someone who was very instrumental uh, behind the scenes, I know for the entire women's division, was uh, Dave Fit Finley, who uh, oh, recently yeah. left the company. I just wanted to get uh, from someone that I'm sure worked with him quite a lot, just kind of uh, how he assisted the, the entire Divas division, because he seems someone that was very, very popular uh, oh, amongst the yeah. women. We all love him. We love him and we miss him. He's just so such a great guy, so knowledgeable. I mean, if you see his work, uh, just seeing him mm -hmm. perform, you know that he knows so much. He's so knowledgeable. And he's very patient with us and understanding, and he knew how to like, explain everything to us and teach us. And I think it, it, some people may think that it's easy, like, oh, I could show somebody something. No, sometimes it takes a certain kind of char um, charisma or a certain kind of way to talk to, some, to, like, to anybody, to people, to just have it click in your head. And he was just great. He's, he knew so much. He was very patient because sometimes we just like, we ask a lot of questions. And he's just such a great guy. And he, we learned so much from him. And he's missed, he's definitely missed. And my final question is that uh, up here in Canada on Fight Network, we, uh, we have recently been airing Tough Enough. And yeah. I just wanted to ask you how it feels to be part one half of the greatest match 
of all time between you oh. and Alicia Fox. And oh what you goodness. thought of with, <laughs> oh with all the greats out there, <laughs> Melina and Alicia Fox for, uh, for Arian Andrews. <laughs> I think that's really sweet of her to say, like, there's just so much talk, like, um, there are people getting mad, and then there's people get, um, that agreed. So, like, I, there's so much behind this, like, I heard a lot of stuff. But this is what I said. My comment to that was, that was, thank, like, I think, like, thank, I thank her for saying that, because there's a lot of people, and I know there's, there were a lot of hardcore fans that were angry because they were like, out of all the matches in history, you picked that one? Well, you know what? Not everybody has watched wrestling since, you know, the 70s, 80s, 90s. They haven't. They barely started watching. And if this is the match that they saw that inspired them to, to learn how to wrestle or inspired them to watch, then that's an honor. It, it may not have been the best match that I've had in my career. Um, I think Alicia Fox is amazing. Um, uh, wrestlers. I'm, I'm very proud of her. Um, but I think that that was like really, it was a compliment to have that, uh, have her say that. But what do you I feel can't. is the best match of your career? Is there one that stands out? Oh, there's not just one. Like there's, there's definitely four. Like there was the Survivor Series with Trish. There was, um, I think it was the Royal Rumble with Beth. Right. That was, because working with oh, Beth is great. Oh, where you guys did that crazy submission. Oh, yeah. Oh, my, God. oh, my gosh. Watching that, I was like, what is going on? I, that was probably my favorite, because, like, um, there's a, ma a match with Mickey that I love, Mickey James that I love, and Michelle McCool. But I think the one with Beth was, that's my favorite. Excellent. Well, maybe the greatest match we'll have will be coming up August the 14th, part of WWE SummerSlam. Uh, we're looking forward to it. Thanks a lot for this time. Really Thank you. It.